Hello, I'm Smain. I'm a system engineer at Arkina, and I was working on high availability, scalability, performance issues into the CDN team before starting this project. So we've been uh, working with Kubernetes uh, during the last uh, eight months, and so uh, we will present uh, quickly uh, our company. So w what was the service that have been uh, migrated? Um, also, why we choose Heroku? and why uh, Kubernetes it can be a, a good fit uh, for, for this uh, project. Um, and we will enter, uh, so we'll detail some, some of the features and we'll enter also in uh, some st the steps we made, so at the in the operational way and uh, also the feedback we can share. As a listen, we, we are from this uh, migration. And last, we have uh, contributed to some open source tool that have helped us to, to deploy and uh, the cluster and to deploy the application. So we may probably do a, a short demo also of uh, one of, of these tools. So Arkana is a major company, uh, mostly based in France, but also in Europe. Um, they have uh, three main uh, projects. So one is a CDN. Uh, What do you want? Yeah. The resolution of it? It's not being recorded. Sorry, what, 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 I don't understand. So, um, we have uh, three, three main uh, products. One is a CDN, mo mostly based in France. Other one is uh, named uh, Content for, uh, um, Cloud for Major. And the third one is an uh, OTT uh, video on demand platform. So basically, some big channels uh, want to provide an experience like uh, Netflix, but don't want for the technical details, uh, don't want to have to deal with this. So we propose an API, so they just send okay, the content and we are doing every interaction with the end user. So to propose uh, this video, so registration and uh, so to, to, to check if he has the right to play the content. So this service was running on uh, Kubernetes, on uh, Heroku, and uh, we move it. So some of the, we work with uh, very big uh, channels across Europe and, uh, and the world. So one thing we really enjoy about Heroku is like we don't care about what is uh, behind. It's a real what's a past platform. Um, so we are just pushing uh, code, and so we we, we reduce it. We don't have operational team. It's uh, everyone just push code and push, and uh, Heroku is doing everything for us. So monitoring and uh, being sure that uh, everything is up. It's also very easy to scale, and uh, in our uh, business, it's quite uh, important because, as I say, we work from different kind of channels. So one of them, for example, is a sports sport event. So during a world week, we have no traffic, but during the big match events, uh, in one night, it can go very large. So we need to be able to scale up, scale down, uh, allocate resources, depending on that. And each of our customers have a dedicated um, application platform. So it, sh it should be quite uh, easy to, to set up this. So with Heroku, it's like uh, no brain, just click a new application, select what I want, Postgres, Redis, Memcache, and you have your, your box, push your code. And the workflow uh, from the dev team to, to production, we just tag uh, some stable version and uh, we push. So this is why we really enjoy it, have a higher velocity to from the development to production. So as you see, uh, we, are, we were very enjoying what was doing uh, Heroku, but why we, we left? So our uh, c uh, customer clients get more engines, so we have uh, some uh, increasing uh, traffic, and we scale up on Heroku, and the price gets significant. At the point, was the business plan was not matching what. And so at the moment, they just uh, came and said, OK, at Arkena, we have a, a strong culture of doing everything uh, internally. So we have data center and, um, like I think, 500 uh, machines uh, across France. And they say, OK, can you just take some of these uh, 20, 20 machines and just move out from Heroku, do uh, like uh, other team? Uh, this is the, the beginning of the, this, uh, this project. I say yes, but I want to keep some of the core feature, like I I I can go to the bare metal uh, infrastructure, but I won't be able to to keep the reliability, the scalability in the same uh, uh, easy as easy as in on Heroku. 
Uh, we have the log uh, platform, so it should be easy to plug it uh, also uh, to be able to monitor, uh, which is an important thing. And also the performance was quite stable on Heroku. Don't want to lose any performance by doing this migration. So this is where uh, Osmain, which is uh, an admin sys, uh, will take a look at the, the ecosystem and try to find the solution to to this requirement. So well, um, uh, Antoine came to me and uh, talked to me uh, about his needs. So um, I was really excited because I was working with uh, Linux containers for quite a long time. And uh, I began to search for such kind of uh, orchestration, scheduling, uh, tools and uh, actually we didn't have the time to do a complete comparison between them all so we I just chose uh, Kubernetes because it seemed to me the most promising with this concept of pods, uh, replication, controllers, services and so on so I did a first proof of concept and I presented it to Antoine and his team and we agreed to work on the feature requirements together so the first requirement is to have a highly available and scalable application. So uh, in order to achieve that, we make use of the replication controllers. So when uh, when uh, an application fails, it is restarted automatically. We needed a way to increase or reduce the number of pods uh, quickly because, as, as you said, we have uh, sports events and uh, and uh, we often have peak of traffic, so we needed a way to r quickly increase our cap capacity. Uh, on Heroku, it is pretty simple. You just have to drag a slider to the number of instances, and uh, and uh, that's it. And on uh, Kubernetes, it is quite similar. You just have to change uh, the number of replicas. Uh, another feature we're looking for uh, for R2 is the horizontal pod autoscaling. Um, it's uh, s it's uh, the ability to automatically uh, uh, increase or reduce the number of, of pods. Uh, it is pretty simple. It's just use the CPU usage, and uh, our application is spread across uh, two data centers. So, if one data center crashes, the other one can handle the traffic. And Finally, we have a database uh, with a master and a and slave server. Okay. So the second point is, uh, I think, the most important uh, one, uh, one of the most important. We wanted to keep the, uh, the, the same log management we have on Heroku. Uh, so uh, we, we needed a way to collect the log from the Kubernetes platform and send them to a reliable storage. So we used uh, the a Kubernetes feature named uh, daemon set, uh, which allowed us to run a, a Logstash shipper pod per node. And then is, uh, the logs are sent to Logstash indexers for log processing, uh, formatting, uh, calcu some calculation on GeoIP, for instance. Then they are stored twice uh, on the HDFS server for the long time storage and on our uh, Elasticsearch cluster in order to to, uh, to investigate and to explore the logs uh, from the Kubana UI. So the third point is about the monitoring we, we built. Uh, we needed uh, to know if our application is healthy so uh, the first thing we wanted to keep from Heroku is the ability to to self-heal. Uh, so we configured our, our health checks in order to, according to our application, readiness, liveness. Yeah, so it has been some key feature like for us, uh, especially because on bare metal, we don't have things like that uh, because on Heroku, when something failed, uh, I just we don't know about that. No one's call us on the night say, okay, you have, we, we wanted five instances, but now you have only four. Yeah, there is on the west five instances. Maybe in the log we see it has been restarted. So this is something we really wanted to to keep as a as a feature. So I think uh, this. So in each of our resources, we s we we set uh, a liveness and readiness mm. to be sure that it's it's behave as we want. 
So for the infrastructure monitoring, we kept uh, some well-known monitoring tool. We, the operation team uh, is used to, s to configure Shinken servers, so we just uh, uh, installed a, a new instance of the, this uh, monitoring system. And uh, it, is, uh, it, it monitors the infrastructure and the uh, Kubernetes components. For instance, you, if we wanted to know if the uh, API can handle the uh, new requests. And we installed the time survey database uh, in order to gather data performance statistics and uh, with the hipster to collect uh, the containers statistics. Uh, we, we kept n uh, an another monitoring tool we used on Heroku is New Relic because uh, the development team uh, uh, were used to uh, to investigate on this tool and we wanted the, them to be happy, so we kept that, uh, that tool. Another point, the last point, is uh, the network performance. We wanted uh, to, ke to keep at least the same performance as Heroku, so we, d we did some tests on a given number of uh, network plugins and some benchmarks. And, uh, and uh, uh, you, you, have, uh, you, will, you will find a link of my blog po post. Uh, it's ongoing, but uh, you can have some results of my performance tests at, at the end of this slide. Okay, so m most of uh, the requirement was uh, full file. So now we just we say, okay, let's go to production. Uh, let's 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 do let's build this cluster. So let's see how we the concrete uh, step of how we we build. Uh, so let's see how our our production looks like. So let's talk about our platform. So actually, this platform is uh, spread uh, in two data centers. We we have two distinct uh, Kubernetes clusters, one per data center, and uh, uh, in the beginning of the project, we uh, we had only one cluster spreaded across the data center, and uh, uh, then we decided to split it in two because we wanted a way to do some maintenance upgrade on on one data center without downtime. So each uh, each cluster is composed of uh, six nodes, and we have in front of them HA uh, proxy load balancers. It's uh, it, lo it load balance uh, on the node ports, so it's pretty simple configuration. Uh, our database is shared. That means that uh, each client has has its own database into the server. And uh, finally, we use the, the network. We choose. Calico as a network plugin because, uh, as I said, uh, in the first design we we wanted a way to export the routes to our uh, our uh, data center routers, and uh, its performance has, uh, are, are quite good. And we want we are aiming to uh, configure the network policy too in the future. So. This is the step we made uh, the day we, we migrate. Uh, so uh, we quickly go, go through. So of course, the first step was to deploy the application on Kubernetes. Then we put uh, the Heroku uh, in maintenance, and we just uh, copy the database in our uh, Arcana database. And we upgraded the application to, to use this database. So because at some point, we wanted to be able to, to run the both uh, application at the same time. So. At this moment, it was very easy to, to roll back. So we put it back the service online. So the, the shutdown was very short, just the time of uh, the maintenance, the copy of the database. We ran tests uh, directly hitting the, the services in uh, the Kubernetes. And when it was uh, OK, we changed the DNS. So in French, it can take maybe higher, uh, elsewhere also uh, some time for the propagation. And uh, this is why we wanted absolutely to have both um, both application to be able to run at the same time. Um, so at this moment, it was quite hard to roll back. It will be take some time. So we we are just this moment where we wait to be sure this will be good. And then we 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 just uh, shut down the the Heroku uh, application. So. It's been very very smooth. When we have been prepared to to these steps, uh, we have documented uh, each uh, 
each moment if how we can roll back uh so so we get uh, prepared in any case of uh, of failure but, uh, one thing i uh so the some some feedback one thing i can say uh when we wanted to to introduce kubernetes in our company was quite uh we find some resistance uh like s people was uh was knowing how to to manage uh, vm uh how to deploy uh, things like traditional uh, deployment and so it was very important to to make them understand why kubernetes can be uh go good how we can help uh, help us and it was well like, long long time uh so we we wanted to involve all the teams operational teams and infrastructure team and even the the project and marketing to to uh, to them to understand why um why this this uh kubernetes infrastructure can help us to to go uh, forward and in the end everyone has been uh, pretty exciting uh so it it just it's not only training uh, session is very uh make them knowing what is Kubernetes. So I think we have been uh, a little bit um, strong is about how we can deploy a production ready cluster uh, about high availability. The, the documentation was not very clear, like not giving clear recommendation. Uh, how so for example, we have been like one big cluster between two data center, then we split it in two. And also for its component, how API master can be uh, high available, uh, how we how we use, uh, how we call it, do so it's not very clear, and uh, I hope it will be um, it will be improved in the future, and uh, the upgrade procedure also. So uh, Kubernetes move forward, so from migrating to one one zero one one, so it's not we face it some like discussion about that. And also the well, Kubernetes is quite young, and uh, the ecosystem around it also, and sometimes what a bit challenging like what do we put in production uh which version and and everything is moving very fast so when it's in production we can we can't do uh like get all the upgrades of cluster anytime so it's been something uh we're looking at so we have been uh, involved in uh, two um, two open source uh, project one is Capspray because we wanted to industrialize everything uh, that we are made so to deploy the cluster we wanted to be able to crash it uh, deploy it again so uh, it be easy for everyone to deploy uh, the tools so one one of them is uh, Capspray and uh, i will speak about uh, the other one after which is to deploy application so the first one is to deploy the, clus the cluster itself, so all every components uh, inside the Kubernetes cluster, the, and it set up the cl the the, the uh, network plugin too. So it's an open source project, and uh, it is uh, it is it aims to deploy a production ready cluster, and uh, it it supports uh, bare metal, AWS, and GCE. And uh, currently we support with Lanel and Keleco, and we uh, are wor working on the supporting Romana and Open Control in the future. It supports most of popular li Linux, Linux dis distribution, so CoreOS, CentOS, uh, Red Hat, uh, Debian. And one, and one thing we wanted to focus on is the continuous in integration test. So uh, each time there's a change, uh, it uh, causes uh, to run multiple cluster deployments. Uh, we test each combination, uh, for instance, CentOS with uh, with uh, Calico, Debian with uh, with each combination. We we have we wanted to test it, so so that it doesn't break anything. Yes. So the main idea is like to have a single entry point to deploy a cluster that made easy for everyone. So every every step we face uh, it's been easy for there so it's now uh, quite stable and already integrated in some uh, external service like uh, digital over from Racken and I think there is also other companies that using this script spread to deploy your cluster because it's very uh, flexible where to uh, to deploy thing so when when the second part where I've been working on is uh, how to deploy the application stack uh, because now we have a running uh, cluster so how we deploy concretely application so is I mean in, in Kubernetes, we have a lot of resources, so how we make it them uh, combined, like for example, uh, there is 
I think we need a, a, a upper um, tool so to deploy a full stack application. So what I mean by full stack is mean like, okay, I have web service that depend on Redis, that depend on Memcache, depend on Postgres or something more uh, a database. So we should need uh, a dependency management to, to deploy all of that. And for production has been very uh, focusing also to version everything. So when I give a package for the QA and I want it to be deployed exactly the same when I go to production. So this is uh, to be able to version everything and to be reproducible. Last also, um, for now, every package are quite uh, split uh, across uh, the community and everyone is doing example. I wanted to, to get some registry about uh, everything also. So this tool um, we're working on, uh, maybe I can uh, will be quickly show how, how, it's, uh, how it's working. So it, uh, KPM, it's a Python client that is connected to uh, to uh, an API that will uh, just fetch and uh, list uh, the package. So, for example, we can list uh, the different packages. Well, if you see something may be big, uh, we can list the packages for one user uh, in particular, for example, uh, Smana. And it's handling the privacy if you want to be open source or, or not or uh, private. So we tried just to deploy, for example, uh, uh, Rocket Chat, which is a web uh, a web client that depends. Oh, it's a web service that depends on MongoDB. So it will be quite uh, easy. So you can select the namespace you want to deploy it. Okay, it's a bit m messy. So. You see, there is uh, a, a change. Like it, I've deployed MongoDB, so the service applications and Rocket Chat, uh, the service and the application too. So we are focusing on it to, to be it important. So you just declare what the state you want, and when you try to update it, we we'll say okay, it's okay. So it will manage all the dependency for you. And for example, if we want to upgrade a Rocket Chat and detect that MongoDB haven't changed, we we'll just update the service uh, Rocket Chat. So we can really share a complete a complete application. So. It's quite simple to to create a, a package. This is what the some something we we are focused uh, also. So let's look. Let's see how it looks like. So it's a very basic uh, directory structure, with a manifest uh, YAML. So there is a metadata of the package. Uh, so we can template uh, the the resources, and but we want it to be light uh, like. Do not template everything. I will maybe explain later. So here, another thing is like just list your, your resources you want to send, and the last, the last uh, key is just say okay, what are the dependencies? So there is a special key named sel self because to just maybe you want to deploy this service before another one, so you can move it in the list. Okay, this is basically how it's working. So for example, if I want to just change uh, the version, say, okay, this time I want uh, always deploy five replication. You probably want to change the version depending. To send it to the registry, you just uh, KPM push. Uh, let's see. So now you have this new version here that is ready to use. And you have KPM de uh, deploy it. I think what's okay on uh, chat. So you can indicate a version here. So I want to deploy the 1.2 or anything. By default, it will be the latest. You see the MongoDB has a change and a uh, Rocket Chat has changed. So we'll be creating every every resources you know you want. Um, okay. So there is uh, also, also we were uh, focusing on is. Um, is being able to so m most of there is some some tools that quite uh, similar, but they are all focusing on being templated. But sometimes the template don't have the value you want to change, so you have two two way to do that. You fork it, or you you do pull request like please add my 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 value to your to your template. So I don't like to fork everything, and uh, sometimes don't no response, and I don't like to to have a template that is too big. So I just add uh, something called patch. So for example, here I want to add m a particular not port to this uh, package. So I say, okay, I want to reuse this package, but I want to use uh, 
this node port. So this is JSON patch. There is an RFC for that. And what is nice about that is that if uh, kube dash uh, change, the version is being upgraded, you always have the same node port. So you can change the main package, the upstream package, but you can just just patch what what you want and reuse it. Um, so the ma the main idea is to encourage to have just some upstream package and uh, and some addition. So this is the tool we we aim to we are built to to be able to deploy quickly new application. You can check uh, the registry. Okay, so wha what are, are we waiting for uh, on uh, the Kubernetes uh, next uh, version? Uh, so Kubernetes, as uh, you see, we have into the data center. So Kubernetes will be the federation of uh, different cluster. So we have one on Chipren. For now, we deploy in both uh, cluster A, cluster B. Mm -hmm. So we we waiting Kubernetes uh, that we give us uh, a federation of this clustering. Um, first, we wanted to use Kubernetes raw Kubernetes, I would say, uh, but we are looking also to to add some tool on top of that, like days or OpenShift to to uh, to have again uh, some some uh, workflow we had on Heroku. Um, so all our clients sharing the same uh, infrastructure. So network uh, policies enforcement is being uh, is going to be very important uh, for us. Last also we have some some queue so custom metric auto scaling. So a quick example of what is it is like uh, you can have a, a message queue that's getting big. So like and you can say, okay, if I have more than 10,000 uh, message, just spawn more uh, consumer, more pod to, to handle this, this, uh, this queue. Okay, so there is a lot of more to, to come on uh, Kubernetes, but this is some of the points we, we, we look uh, at. So that's um, yeah. been a, a very nice project so it has been a quite long project, but uh, very nice. They've been uh, like we started in uh, in uh, August uh, last year, and uh, we just migrated uh, last month in uh, in production. So it's it's involving a lot in the in in a company to to do this uh, this migration, and in the end, everyone was very very interesting uh, in it, and the first. Why we moving out from uh, from uh, Eroku was the price. So now we have a way better resource management. So we just really uh, have focused on that, and uh, Kubernetes have given us all the possibility to to adjust uh, everything on that. That is so. So you can s some link here. So the link to the. Um, Project we we contribute the so Cube Spray, uh, KPM, also some benchmark uh, that uh, Smana have, uh, have done is uh, updating them uh, constantly. Like uh, it's getting uh, update from Calico with, uh, so you can check uh, is doing some nice uh, benchmark uh, for the community, and we try to animate also the French community to to make uh, some uh, some organization. So we have uh, a website also, that uh, and thank you to Sarah to help us also to build this. If you have any question now, yeah. What do you mean by driver? Yes, yes. The, the the main reason it was the the, the, the cost and and why Aero and but so was mostly this. So when we scale up for an Aeroku, the price gets too too big and it was not uh, propagate to the customer. So at some time we, they think, okay, how we can reduce uh, to increase uh, the the margin benefit. Mm. That was a question where we uh, we we had like okay if we move out from Eoku but we have a five people team to to manage that I will we will want nothing so this is something uh, that I think uh, Kubernetes lower uh, this so of course man now we are we will have uh, some maybe one 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 uh, person that will do most uh, more personal on this but um, yes this is uh, something uh, we we figure 
Um, one thing we didn't say that we have a lot of infrastructure. We were we were we are a CDN, so we have a lot of servers. Uh, the network is is uh, is present, so we uh, it is really cheaper in terms of uh, infrastructure. Yeah. Pure infrastructure. Yeah, the, the, the team was already there. Like so, we mm. just uh, say, okay, can you allocate us uh, one half of someone to to do this? But uh, yes, definitely, it's n just not uh, 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 hardware cost. It's also who's going to operate mm. it. So it, it has to be entered in the equation for sure. Yes. Yes, yeah, so we, we, we are thinking about. Uh, uh, actually, we uh, we we've, we've seen OpenShift at uh, the beginning of the project, but uh, we wanted to uh, um, a common f framework. Uh, we we, d we didn't want to depend on uh, on uh, a UI, uh, so we wanted a common framework, uh, for Kubernetes, and uh, later we wanted to think about the UI uh, on top of it, uh, DIS or or, or maybe uh, OpenShift. Uh, Yes, and yes. and also we wanted to, to to learn about Kubernetes mm -hmm. before to add uh, some tools on top of it. So so now we we are try uh, we are quite confident. So we are reinvestigating uh, OpenShift or days or other tool. Uh, we maybe we can we can go, but I think it was a quite a good choice to go directly just Kubernetes because now we have yes. a stronger uh, knowledge about. We it. have a stable uh, production ready uh, deployments. That, that want uh, we wanted to achieve that uh, before choosing a tool of that on top of Kubernetes.